after learning about environmental injustice and learning specifically how it has impacted my community, it really like struck a chord with me and I knew that I wanted to work in this field. Everyone in this career and sector is so, so sweet and so willing to learn. Something I was really nervous about at first is the pay because first then, you know, that's something that you really worry about. It's like, let's just get the highest paying job and I was proven wrong. Welcome to another episode of Direct Current's People Powered series, where we bring you real stories of the people powering our clean energy economy. I'm your host, Matt Dozier. Today, I want to introduce you to Gabby Ibarra. She's a first-generation college graduate and daughter of Mexican immigrants who recently moved to New York City to start her career. She's working for a startup that modernizes old buildings, replacing their outdated heating and cooling systems with healthier, more efficient electric ones. Coming up, we'll hear from Gabby about how she found her way into this field and what it means to her to help low- and middle-income neighbors with their energy bills while cutting down on carbon emissions. Stay tuned. It's science for the people. This is Direct Current. My name's Gabby Ibarra. I'm currently in Brooklyn, New York, and my job title is I'm a building energy analyst at Block Power. So tell us a little about yourself. So yeah, I'm a 24-year-old Latina. I'm actually from Los Angeles, California. I came to Brooklyn for this amazing job. My family is from Mexico, and it's something I carry very proudly on my shoulder. I went to college being first done in my family, which is something also I'm really proud of. I went to USC, which really has close family ties to me because my mom actually worked there her whole life. She's been working there since before I was born. So I felt like oh, I wow. was meant yeah, <laughs> I was meant to go there. And during my time there, I studied to be a chemical engineer. And I had an emphasis in environmental engineering. So that's kind of how I started to get sprinkled into this. <laughs> I graduated in 2020, now currently pursuing my master's at the University of San Francisco in energy systems management. And yeah, now I'm here working on Block Power. <laughs> what does a building energy analyst do? How would you explain your work to your parents or a friend? Yeah, being first-gen college student, sometimes that's a, a lot of questions I get asked, like, what, what do you even do, you know? So what I tell my family and friends is that we electrify homes here in New York, and we focus specifically in low and medium income households. So what does that look like? We replace their fossil burning heating systems and cooling systems with heat pumps. So now it can be fully run on electricity, and that can move us towards our zero net energy goals as a society. Awesome. So what does a typical day on the job look like for you? Yeah, as part of our engineering team, you know, I work on different projects and coming up with the design and feasibility of these projects. So what that looks like is working with other teams, such as, you know, our business development teams, understanding what the scope of work is for these buildings. The thing you learn fast when you start working in the building sector is every building is very unique and you start becoming a little detective. So you really start understanding what this building is, what are the needs of the building and their occupants, and how we can get them towards being fully electric. Tell me a little bit more about that process. You know, what's it like being a detective and and sort of seeking (laughs) out the different ways that you can help electrify their home? Are you in single family homes or apartment complexes, that sort of Mm -hmm. thing? We work on a variety of homes from single family to multifamily to duplex complex, especially here in New York. So what that looks like is we have to calculate what the building heating and cooling load is. So we have to understand how much the house needs to be comfortable for people to live in. And some of these buildings are very, very old, right? So they're like 1910s, 1800s even. So you have to understand how the building was built, what were the materials incorporated to understand how bad it is to keep heat inside, essentially. (laughs) So if a home is pretty old, then you can imagine that it demands more heat because the heat just wants to leave. So um, you have to understand, you know, how also the occupants are using it. You know, like you were saying, is it a single family or is it like a huge apartment building, right? Where you keep coming in and out and the door keeps opening. So we work with 
the clients to understand what that looks like. We go into the buildings, um, take pictures, take pictures of what they currently have for their um, heating systems and their ACs. You know, do they have window units, things like that. So we are able to paint a better picture of understanding what their heating load is going to be needed to now design what we want for them. What does it look like when you're taking the existing system and doing those calculations to kind of figure out what the new system needs to be? You said it's always different from building to building. You know, uh, how does it change, you know, from one to the next? Yeah. So I think, okay, this gets complicated really quick. (laughs) Um, But, you know, we focus really on just changing the heating system that they currently have. When in reality, in order for a home to be, you know, the best efficiency, it takes so much more than that in creating the insulation, sealing the windows, things like that. And we do obviously include that um, a lot in our projects, but those calculations are the hard parts to know because some buildings are so old that people aren't aware of like what they're even living in, right? They're like, I don't know what's in my walls. Like, I don't know if I have insulation or not. So um, (laughs) that's always the harder part. Do you go in, I mean, how much time do you spend going into the buildings and trying to suss that kind of stuff out? Yeah. So we have a great construction team that goes in and they're the ones that take pictures of everything, get us the full scoop of what, what what we're looking at. And New York has also great databases where we can find these records of these buildings of understanding what they have gone through. And that's something that's really unique about New York and why Block Power has started here because we have all this data and it it helps us build off our projects. Coming up, a change of perspective sets Gabby on a new career path. Hey, did you know that over 2 million people work in the energy efficiency sector across the United States? Many of America's 130 million buildings need an upgrade to meet our energy needs in an environmentally responsible way. We need talented architects, engineers, builders, contractors, facility managers, and so much more to make this happen. Would you like to join them? The Buildings Technologies Office's Green Buildings Career Map shows you how. At greenbuildingscareermap.org, you can chart your own course in the building sector. Find out what jobs there are, what education you need, and how you can move from one corner of the building sector to another. Visit greenbuildingscareermap.org to chart your building's career today. How did you get into this line of work? So I was studying chemical engineering. You know, as a first gen, you kind of just go into college and you're just really lost and not understanding what majors even are. You kind of only go to find a job because that's what everyone tells you. So I love chemistry and I love math. I was like, oh, this checks out. But closer to my senior year, after learning about environmental injustice and learning specifically how it has impacted my community, it really like struck a chord with me. And I knew that I wanted to work in this field, especially in engineering, because you usually don't see, you know, women are people of color. I think in engineering, a lot of times people don't think that has anything to do with equity or environmental justice when I think it's the quite opposite, right? We are literally building the societies and things around that affect people. So I knew I want to speak for these communities and make sure that all voices are heard equally and that we're asking these questions when making our designs and planning. So I decided to get my master's to learn more about the energy systems because that was something I thought I was definitely lacking in. And now I'm learning about the history of our grid and how utilities work and, you know, what the future looks like. And I want to keep making sure that we're asking the questions of who is being asked of what to do next and, you know, making sure that all these voices are included and acknowledged. So you have an engineering background. Do you think that that's generally the level of education that somebody needs to get into a similar role as to what you're doing? I think, I don't want to say so, but (laughs) I'm not sure (laughs) if I'm being completely honest. Like, I believe that if, you know, you maybe go to trade school and also, you know, become an electrician, I think you can also take up a role like this. I don't think it's specifically very narrow to you have to have an engineering degree. But of course, a lot of things that I did learn from school are very helpful to this now. Was this your first job out of college? 
So I did a fellowship last year with Climate Corps, AmeriCorps, and that was a, about a year fellowship. And then I came here not to build power. What do you like the most about your job? I think it's the work and the people. The people in my work are just so passionate about the climate crisis. And I just appreciate the passion that they also have of willing to continue to learn, which I don't think is necessarily true for every field of work. So that is something I really enjoy about my work. And then, of course, like the work that we do, knowing that we're working towards ending the climate crisis is really powerful. Yeah, for sure. What kind of impact would you say that this job, this career has made on your life? I mean, physically, I'm here in New York now. So that's like a huge impact it made on my life. But also, I really think now I understand how complex solving the climate crisis can be and how many different moving parts there are to it. And um, that is something I definitely understand now, as well as continuously learning how we need to work with communities instead of, you know, just coming in and acting like we know what the best is, you know, instead of working with the communities that we're in, right? I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, instead, <laughs> instead of dictating what needs to happen or what should happen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do you see this as, I don't know if lifelong is necessarily the best wording, but do you see this as a career for the long term? Yes, definitely. This is something I want to continue doing. You know, I'm still pretty young, I think. So I'm not sure if like I specifically want to stay in building, but I know I want to dedicate my career to solving the climate crisis. And going back to, you know, what I said, like I really want to make sure that all communities are really included in this transition and making sure that their voices are acknowledged. It's time for you to come create solutions that save the planet. Hi, I'm Jigger Shaw, Director of the U.S. Department of Energy's Loan Programs Office, where we commercialize large-scale, game-changing energy companies and projects. As someone who's new to federal service, I can share from personal experience what a great transition it has been to work with this group of professionals dedicated to the mission of DOE. Through the Clean Energy Corps, DOE is hiring across the country in a streamlined, direct hire process to join the federal service. If you want to do meaningful work and like what you do with solid job benefits like a path to a pension, strong retirement match, paid parental leave, generous health care contributions, and much more, check out energy.gov slash careers now and drop in your resume. It's the chance of a lifetime to make an impact for generations to come. We're hiring for positions across the country, across career categories, across expertise levels. If you want to make a difference on the climate crisis, there's a place for you here. Please apply today. Thinking of it then as kind of a career path, how do you see your, your future trajectory? Do you feel good, you know, so so about the prospects of advancement, pay, you know, benefits, things like that? Yeah, definitely. I think that that's a great question because it was something I was really nervous about at first when I decided to, you know, go into working in the climate crisis is, is the pay because, you know, again, I was saying first then, you know, that's something that you really worry about. It's like, let's just get the highest paying job and let's keep going and marching along. But um, I was proven wrong. You know, I have talked to multiple people in this career and they have all told me, you know, there is security in these jobs and there is good pay. And that's not something that you necessarily have to worry about. Of course, I understand that, you know, I do have an engineering degree and I do want to acknowledge that, but I still believe that there's a lot of great jobs out there with a lot of security and, and pay and upper mobility, like you were saying. Right. So, you know, doing something that's, you know, beneficial to the, the planet, to society is not mutually exclusive with actually making a, a decent living. Yes, I agree with that statement 100%. Uh, you've talked about this a little bit so far, but, you know, on the note of working in a field that's actively combating the, the climate crisis, how does it feel when you you take a step back and think about the impact that the kind of work that you're doing can have on communities? It makes me feel so happy, so proud, and makes me want to keep going, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's a whole lot of feelings that you can feel, and I understand it's still a job at the end of the day. So sometimes you can get lost, you know, doing your work when I'm doing 
a heating load calculation. I don't necessarily think like, yes, I'm reducing emissions and now the world's going to be solved. Like, of course not, you know? So it is important. I think personally for me to try and step back and be like understanding what the big picture of my career is and of my job and the company I work for. And that just makes me so proud to be a part of and uh, motivating. And it's something that I kind of try to like push other people to continuously. I can't help it, you know? (laughs) Right. You mentioned your your roots in Los Angeles. I mean, do you ever see yourself trying to you know go back and implement the skills, the work that you've done in in New York, and taking that back to LA? Yes, of course, constantly. <laughs> um, you know, I'm so really early on in my career, and I'm trying to learn as much as possible from all these amazing people I have met here, and understanding how I can bring this back exactly how you said to my community. I'm from the San Fernando Valley. So that would be my dream is going back and making sure I can help us in whatever way possible, you know? What advice would you have for somebody else who's uh, interested in following a, a similar path or doing the kind of work that you're doing? Yeah, I would say go for it. <laughs> Just do it, you know? Um, start talking to as many people as possible. I understand that it's very overwhelming. The idea of networking used to scare me like crazy, but everyone in this career and sector is so, so sweet and so willing to learn and is like the most inclusive sector I have ever worked with. I mean, again, it's my first career, but you know, (laughs) just coming from like chemical engineering, it's very inclusive compared to things like that. So I would say, Please don't be afraid to reach out to people on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on anything, you know, any platform that you see. Go ahead and ask questions because I know I'm willing to answer and I know so many other people that are willing to answer too because that's our favorite thing is to talk about our jobs and recruit as many people as possible. (laughs) That's good advice. (laughs) Gabby Ibarra, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. That's all for this episode of Direct Current. We'll have more energy efficiency content, including links to the Green Building's Career Map and Clean Energy Core, in our show notes at energy.gov slash podcast. A huge thanks to my guest, Gabby Ibarra, for sharing her story. Thanks as well to Jigger Shah and Charisma Troyano for lending their voices to this episode. Stay tuned for more people-powered stories. Subscribe to Direct Current on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts to hear the rest of the series. Direct Current is produced by me, Matt Dozier. Sarah Harmon creates original artwork for all of our episodes. This is a production of the U.S. Department of Energy and published from our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. Thanks for listening.